Welcome back to Somali Times with Pogs and Skins. What do you got for us today, Poxy? We've got a special treat for the listeners today, Skins. Um, first of all, apologies to the listeners. A little bit gusty in the studio today. Sam Skinner smashed a reverse sweep off my uh, bowling and indoor cricket, so it's a little bit gusty. Um, that aside, welcome to the studio, Mark Simpson. Hi, guys. Great to be here. Thanks, Simo. Um, first of all, congratulations on a cracking season so far. Uh, 483 runs, average of over 40. Um, just an absolute stellar season thus far. How are you feeling about it all? Uh, pretty good, thank you. Thanks for the kind words. Um, it's been a good year for everyone, so hopefully we can keep the momentum rolling into the finals. And we hear you're. Uh, I mean, we we all know that you're a big big fan of some old school cricket. Um, and we've just had a photo of you slipped under the uh, studio door with a magnificent helmet with a uh, plastic grill. Can you tell us about that uh, item of memorabilia? Uh, yeah, that was a, it was a bit of a throwback helmet, actually. Um, they brought them in for a very short period of time in the early 2000s. Can't imagine why they didn't stay in for very long. Uh, and I happened to have one in my bag, and I head-butted a short one off Rob Castle and ruined my grill. And instead of uh, going down to the shops and buying another proper one, I just popped that one on for, a, for a half a season or so. Coincidentally, I too owned a white uh, plastic grilled helmet um, ended up in a bag of Rajiv Mukuntan, never to pers- never to be seen again. So I think he might have sold that on eBay for a couple hundred dollars and bought some new DJ decks. But anyway, you'd come up with some good nicknames for Rajiv Mukuntan, wouldn't you? <laughs> you would, you would. Uh, and that's a that's a good segue into our next question, Simo. Um, your your quality of conversation is renowned around Mark. Um, uh, like the the number of times people have been. Uh, just uh, tickled pink about how, how you've been talking on the sidelines when you're waiting to bat. Um, where do you where do you get it? Simo? Do you, uh, is it is a, a, a read a, a huge in-depth reading, or is it just your, your wealth of knowledge or your experience? Uh, just listening over the years, I think listening and observing. I was going to say listening and observing quietly, but I'm not not uh, quite very often. Um, so yeah, just just watching things and uh, retaining information, and then uh, I I enjoy uh, reciting it back and uh, letting other people enjoy things as well. We yeah, uh, I'm sure we enjoy it hearing it as well. So yeah, you're well known for your fireworks on the field, but uh, you're also very well known for your fireworks immediately after being dismissed. Can you tell us about any famous blowups? Have you got any that come to mind? Uh, from time to time the red mist does fall uh, there was actually one many years ago at uh, Melbourne Uni often the, the situation with these is that I'm, I'm just very misunderstood and on this particular occasion I was a good player out of luck uh, got out early um, I, was a, I was an away player it was actually a, a VAS midweek game and got out uh, I was walking off the field, going into the away change rooms and tried to forcibly open the door. It was nothing more sinister than that. Uh, of course, the pavilion, as we know, um, not, the, not the most well-constructed facility going around, uh, a little bit rickety and unfortunately wasn't aware that it was a pull door rather than a push door. Thought I was pushing the door open, actually um, just happened to uh, shatter all the, the glass in the, in the window there. So, like I say, good player out of luck. Yes, and um, just a bit of a heads up, Sim, I think there's some uh, footage from the Sri Lankan tr- trip that uh, one Josh van Kallenberg might have captured, um, and uh, there may or may not have been a small child involved, but anyway, we'll wait, wait for that footage to be released. Um, Sim, I wanted to ask you a bit of a hard-hitting question. Um, there was a moment on the field out uh, on, the, on the University of Maine against Hawthorne Monash. Jared Leger got smashed in the face. Um, a short off drive, fielding it short uh, cover. Um, you assu- assumed, uh, you assumed rather, um, captaincy of the team when Jared went off the field. And um, Skinsey and I were discussing this off air earlier, um, and uh, Skinsey was of the impression that um, that was that was rather rather a long bow to draw that you were just all of a sudden captain. Um, how how do you feel about Skinsey's comments there? Uh, well, it's not the first time that Skinsey's made some underhanded comments behind Blake's back, so I thank you very much for pointing that out to me. Um, I think the situation with that was simply uh, there was a vacuum. There was a leadership vacuum. Someone needed to fill the breach. Um, we've seen things happen in the Middle East where uh, uh, regimes are overthrown and, and the, the uh, tragedy that can come when that leadership vacuum is filled by the wrong people. I was just making sure it didn't get into the wrong hands.
Yes, and by no means am I being critical in asking that question. I'm just uh, uh, regurgitating Skinsy's comments. So, um, anyway, uh, we'll, we'll move on. You've heard it here first, the, the Arab summer <laughs> here at Muck. <laughs> The and <laughs> that's been installed. Mugavi Simpson, yeah, he's uh, he, he's a good uh, plays a good cut shot. Yeah. Simo, um, just wanted to say you're not bowling this year. Um, how's that um, impacted your season? Obviously holding down the the number six slot, doing a fantastic job. How's not bowling? Uh, very very frustrating. The game is much more enjoyable when you bowl. It just breaks up uh, those long days in the field. So it's been pretty hard um, on some days to. Uh, you know, to be out there and, and not be able to get the ball in my hand because I do enjoy it. But uh, the frontline bowls have just had such a good year that, uh, you know, it probably hasn't been too much of a gap, really. It's been great to see, you know, four guys taking 25, 30 plus wickets. Um, so, you know, they've done well. But, yeah, from a personal perspective, it has been very frustrating. Understandably. And any uh, worry about an up-and-coming uh, medium pace bowler who seems to be had, had a few very tight spells over the last few weeks. Um, tall outswing bowler can go the other way though. Um, next season, if you are fit, um, do, do you think you, you might be next in line to that bowler? No concerns. Fair enough. <laughs> Uh, Mark, it's a pleasure as always to have you in the Smiley Times studio. Um, Mark, in a very exciting position with three teams in the running for finals. Um, can you fill us in with your thoughts uh, leading into finals? Thoughts on anything in particular or just... Just uh, any words of advice, any musings about cricket? Well, I'll tell you, two parts of that. First of all, I'm probably not one to give advice on finals because in uh, 100 plus games of first 11 cricket plus... Um, you know, 10 or 12 seasons of uh, Premier Cricket I've only played in one in my whole time so uh, I think the the think the point to be taken from that is they don't come around very often so if you get the opportunity take it with both hands Fair enough Simo, congratulations again on, on a fantastic season um, honour to have you in the studio honour to interview honour to play you with and on that note we'll move on to our next segment it's called Whose Smile Is It Anyway? We play a recording of someone smiling and the listeners get to dial in and guess whose smile it is. So stay tuned for that. Here's a little song I wrote. You might want to sing it note for note. Don't worry. Be happy.